This video is going to cover the unboxing and the assembly of the TST Group step through bike. Although these steps may be familiar with this bike specifically in this video, they should also pertain to the other TST Group bikes as they all share similar traits and frames. You should still be able to follow along and assemble the bike in the same manner using your bike and this as an example for your bike. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Make sure to get all components out of the box. This one was hidden in some of the packaging. Once you lifted the bike out of the box, you need to remove all of the wire ties that are holding all the components to the bike and all the protective packaging, making sure that the bike does not fall over due to weight transfer when these parts are coming off. Although I'm using side cutters for the removal of the wire ties, scissors can be used. Just be cautious not to cut any cables or scratch your paint. Once the majority of the bike packaging has been removed from the bike, you can remove from the wheel the protectors that are for the axle. And these just pull off. At this point, you want to get into your accessories and make sure that everything is there. Inside the accessory box is where you're going to find your warranty card, your user manual, which will help you with the assembly. There'll be a tool kit with some vital tools in it to help you with the assembly. There's also some spare pieces, as indicated. You have your front axle quick release. This is a nut cover to protect and make the bike have a finished look. This will be the rear guard that protects the derailleur in the back of the bike. You'll have your pedals, which they are left and right. You have to make sure that you turn them in the correct direction. Also, you'll find the charger and your kickstand with supplied mounted hardware. The first thing you should do to help keep the bike balanced is put the kickstand on in preparation for when you put the front wheel on. At that point you could put down the kickstand and the bike will stay balanced. The kickstand goes on the back side. There's a machined area for it to fit and the screws go through the front side to hold it in place. Once you have the screws started, make sure that the kickstand is seated in its position in the back and then tighten the screws down. If needed, the kickstand can be adjusted for height using this screw here and this will retract in and out. At this point, you can put your rear nut cover on the back wheel. At this time, it's best to get the gooseneck pointed in the correct direction. During shipping, they point it backwards. It needs to be pointed forwards. You want to make sure before you tighten it down, however, that it's pointed not only in the correct direction, but it is straight and parallel with the forks so that your handlebars will be straight along with what the steering actually does. Once you have everything lined up, you'll remove the small plug to tighten the column bolt that goes down through the forks and then the two cinch bolts that are either side. One faces this way, one faces this way that will lock the gooseneck to the steering mechanism that goes down to the forks. Once that tight, you can replace the protective cover. Now you'll remove these four bolts to allow the handlebars to be mounted in place. When placing the handlebars up to its mounting point, make sure that the cables are not twisted around the frame in an unlikely manner 
to where they will bind up whenever you're turning. This is a guide as to how the handlebar should be mounted based on general settings. However, adjust them for your comfort by turning it up or down before tightening. Again, make sure before you tighten this down that you have the handlebars adjusted for your riding preference. And when you do tighten this down, these are to be tightened equally. Make sure that there is an equal gap all the way around on the bracket whenever it is fully tightened. Do not over tighten one side more than the other. Although this can be done with one person, as I'll demonstrate, it's best to have a second set of hands to help you with the lifting and positioning of the tire wheel assembly with the brake disc to be inserted to the brake caliper using the quick release axle provided. Before you try to insert the disc into the disc brake caliper, you're going to want to remove the packaging safety that keeps the brake disc pads in place. You're also going to loosen the nuts that's currently holding the traveling or packing axle in place. Once loose, the packing axle can come out and be discarded. Paying close attention to the cone-shaped springs and how they point towards the wheel. The small side goes towards the wheel, the big side goes to the outside of the forks. You'll then place the quick release lever on the disc brake side of the wheel assembly and the nut that you had just removed. However, you're going to leave the nut very loose, hardly any amount of threads at all, maybe two threads two full rotations and that's it. You wanna make sure that this is not in a folded over position towards the disc brake, but open and loose to allow the most amount of slack. At this point when lifting the wheel, when lifting the bike to insert the wheel and tire, make sure that the disc brake is going into the caliper and that your axle assembly is positioned equally on both sides fully inserted and allow the fork to rest and push the tire into place and the axle to be supported fully. At this point in time, this is where the kickstand comes into play as we can put the kickstand down before we tighten this. Now we're going to tighten the nut side while slightly pushing in the quick release side with the lever pointed up and forward slightly as to clear the shock. You're going to test the release on how tight the nut should be on the other side until you can push the quick release up and lock it in place with a strong amount of tension, enough to put an indentation in your hand whenever you're pushing it to lock it. It should be tight enough that it can hold the wheel on, but not so tight that it's impossible to get it to close. The front tire is mounted. You may wanna to look to make sure that the cables, like in this case, are routed away from the tire and that it's not rubbing. Sometimes during traveling, some of the cables may come loose from their supports. Just replace it back inside to ensure that it's not interfering with the wheel as you're riding down the road. Next, we're gonna assemble the shifter derailleur guard. First remove the outer nut protection. Once the nut is loose, there's going to be a large washer that you'll move forward off of the frame of the bike and then the shifter guard will insert behind those two devices. Then you can retighten your nut to hold the rear axle in place. Once it's tightened, make sure that you reinstall the protective nut cover. 
and ensure that your shifter moves freely without any binding. Now it's time to assemble the pedals. Again, make sure that you put the L on the left side and this will turn forward as it would tighten when you pedal. So Lefty Lucy does not apply in this case on the left hand side. It's a reverse thread for safety reasons. Use the 15 millimeter wrench to snug it up and do the same on the right side. This one gets tightened in a traditional manner. Right means tight. Remove the protective packaging off of the controller. Move the controller to your desired position that you feel comfortable with it. At that point, you have a small screw that you can tighten here, an Allen head, that will lock it in the position that you want. Check your tire pressures, and you're pretty much finished at that point. All you have to do is enjoy your new bike.